Welcome to another episode of Autogar Fuel. Today with me, AJ. You join me on the beautiful Alps here in the border of Austria and Germany. And today I have the BMW 2 Series Grand Tourer. This is the facelift for the new model year. And let's find out what this car has to offer. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. For those of you in the US or other markets where the 2 Series Grand Tourer and Active Tourer are sold, you might not know what this car is. So let me just fill you in really quickly. The Active Tourer, which is the five seat version, and the Grand Tourer, which is the longer wheelbase and optional seven seat version, are BMW's answer to the small compact MPV segment. This car is fairly popular here in Germany as well as other European markets like the UK. The facelift is pretty much the same for both the Active Tourer and the Grand Tourer, but we're gonna be focusing on the Grand Tourer here. But like I said, the exterior design up till the rear is pretty much the same. So what's new for this facelift? First of all, you will notice that these kidney grill, the iconic BMW design grill, are a lot more bigger now. This is kind of what you see uh, in the recent BMWs like the X2, for example, and the new X3 as well. They're a lot more pronounced, and sometimes you can even say they're a little bit inverted in terms of the, the polygon as compared to the previous or the original traditional BMWs. As well as that, uh, you also see that there's the new optional adaptive LED headlamps like the one we have here. The bonnet is fairly low. It's not an SUV, so you don't have that tall square butch hood and front bumper. It's still very sleek, very car-like, very MPV-like, very minivan-like. Down here, we have some interesting elements, a chrome dash slat across the side near the fog lamps, some air intakes along the side to make the car a little bit more streamlined, and a very clean bumper up front. With the new facelift, the Active Tourer and the Grand Tourer come with several new color options for the body, as well as six, about six new wheel design options. As standard, they're 17 inches, but you can optionally get them in 18 inches or even 19 inches. We have 18 inches over here. I think they look really nice. They have the very typical BMW kind of design, which I like. Going further down, we see the chrome strips along the body, along the window frame. The Active Tourer, which is again the shorter five-seater MPV version of this 2 Series, is 4.35 meters long, but this, the Grand Tourer, is 4.55 meters long. So what that means is it's got a longer wheelbase, and you can see that as well with very short overhangs. So that, that translates to a lot of space on the inside. And thanks to that, you also have the optional third row of seats. What also distinguishes the Grand Tourer from the Active Tourer is this uh, C-pillar. It's a little bit more uh, vertical and the roof is a lot more horizontal, so it's a little bit more van-like, more boxy as compared to the uh, Active Tourer. The Grand Tourer in the back is a lot more vertical as compared to the Active Tourer, but it still has some sporty embellishments like this spoiler in the rear. And down here you will see two very cool looking dual exhaust tips. And by the way, all the two liter engines, the petrol and the diesel, will have two uh, dual exhausts, which is pretty cool.
here we have the key fob. It's very lightweight, very typical of BMW. This has the keyless entry and keyless go, so right now the car is locked. I just come close to it and the door unlocks. The door is very tall, large window area, opens really wide. So that way it's really easy to get in and out. Materials are really nice. This is a wood effect inlay, which also adds a little bit of coziness and warmth to the interior. There's some interior LED lights as well, which also makes the ambiance that much pleasant. Um, materials here are also very plush, but down here, the plastics are a bit hard. We have different options for the seats. We always would like to have um, fabric seats because I think that's a little bit more sustainable and you can save money that way. This particular seat has a lot of options in terms of adjustments. So for the base, you can lift and lower it, change the angle of the recline, side bolstering, as well as even things like increasing the under thigh support. So let's hop inside and take a closer look. So let's talk about the cockpit really quickly. The dashboard is, I think, very well laid out. It's fairly low. It is fairly deep, however, but the steering wheel is really nice. It's the what we come to know and expect from BMW. Really great grip, very sharp and very uh, direct. We'll talk more about that once we're driving. Paddle shifters for the eight-speed auto box. The systems for your assistant um, systems can be controlled over here. So your um, assistant, uh, sorry, adaptive cruise control, speed limiter, and um, the lane keep or lane keeping alert rather. And on this side, you have some buttons for your audio and telephony controls. This is not a digital dashboard. It's an analog dashboard with a small screen down here, which gives you some useful information. There's also the traffic camera, uh, sorry, traffic uh, sign recognition system. So you can see your speed limits on that. Also, there is a heads up display, albeit this is not the projection onto the windshield. There is this piece of plexiglass and the um, heads up display is projected onto that, but it's fairly useful. Although I don't really like it too much because it's not really in my line of sight. It is still a bit too low, so it's not really doing a great job, but it's there if you want it as an option. There's some new infotainment uh, in system options for the two series starting from a 6.5 all the way up to an 8.8 .8 inch screen. We have the touch screen over here. You can also control this with the swivel wheel and the joystick in the central console. You have access to your media, connected drive. This also has Apple CarPlay and some concierge services or assistant um, systems, uh, sorry, assistant services, Wikipedia, weather, things like that. The navigation works really well. You have your uh, map on this large screen as well as the exit commands on the heads-up display. So overall it's very intuitive and easy to understand. Some <laughs> traffic information like that as well as um, your vehicle status. Connecting your phone like I said with Apple CarPlay if you need to. And yeah that's about it. Down here you have some buttons for the uh, presets as well as the the um, mode for the media system that you're using and a physical button for the audio and the power button. You also have a button here as a hotkey to access your safety systems. You have your collision warning, your pedestrian alert and even a lane departure warning system. And I always like these, nav uh, these uh, animations that BMW has. They're so in they're so you know cool. They have this little attention to detail. For collision warning, you see a car that pulls up in front. For a pedestrian alert, the car goes away. The angle changes. There's a kid running across the street. And for this, you have a different angle in the steering wheel, and the wheel of the car turns. So the best thing to do is just push this button once, and everything turns green, which means that you have all your systems on, and then it's easier and more safer to drive. There's a lot of cubby holes in this car. For example, a place here to keep your keys your climate control here, which is a dual zone with seat heaters for the front two seats. Down here you have your uh, switch for changing the driving mode between Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro. We'll talk more about that once we're driving. This is the gear lever for the 8-speed automatic. And this is your 
control system for the iDrive infotainment system. If you don't want to use the touchscreen, you can use the swivel wheel, this joystick, these buttons, and there's a lot of hotkey buttons along the edges as well. There's a central armrest. It's fairly plush, albeit it's not that wide. If you open it up here, you have a very cool clamp for a inductive four charging port, as you can see. And then you can lift the whole thing up. There is more storage down here with the rubber mat, a USB port, a couple of beverage holders, and a 12 volt power socket. And lastly, there is also a glove box, which honestly is not that big, but if it's, you know, if you want to keep some small things, at least there's a place to put it away. Let's take a look in the back seat. Being an MPV, the door opens really wide. It's very square. You also have a very large square opening, so perfect for putting in those child seats. There's isofix points on the outside two seats, as you can see. The seat can also be folded like so, or you can use this tab here to set the angle of recline that you want. And not only that, the seats are also possible to slide forward to liberate more space in the back or to have more space in the middle. Getting inside is fairly easy thanks to this tall roof. And even though the ride height isn't particularly high, because the whole body is very tall, getting in is really easy. The door is also very nice. I like the um, ambient lighting here. You can have different colors if you like. The materials are very plush on the top. The same would affect materials over here. So the doors are pretty much similar front and rear, which is good. It also means hard plastic down there. A net to put your magazines. Air conditioning vents, although this one does not have a third zone, and a 12 volt power socket. There is no USB in this current car. I have plenty of space. This is um, set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight or 1.7 meters. And headroom is also really ample. So it's, it's fairly comfortable because the bench is also fairly flat and the transmission tunnel is also quite minimal. The middle seat is also pretty usable. Let's take a look in the trunk. There's an automatic tailgate which goes up. And by the way, you can see here the third row of seats. We'll take a closer look at that later on. The Active Tourer, which is the shorter version of this, has 468 liters of boot space with the middle row of the seats up. In the um, Grand Tourer, like we have here, it's 560. But if you don't have the seven seat option, uh, you will have a lot more volume liberated where the seats are, and then you get over 645 liters of boot space. But I think with the seats down, you have plenty of room here as well. And it's always good to have, you know, a third row if you have a big family, just in case you need one or two extra seats, it's always a good idea. I think this is a good option. Apart from that, you also have um, a hook over here and the middle row can be folded with these electronic switches. So it's really easy that way. Down here, we have the parcel shelf. And I really like this detail and this, you know, extra engineering. It's not necessary to do this, but you have this little latch which holds it in place. You tuck it into the other side and it's a nice way to fasten it down when you don't require it. So this extra detail is always something that makes me happy. But the real question is, how's the back seat? So let's give that a try. This seat tumbles forward with the latch here and also slides forward. So this is what you can use for a one action tumble and sliding of the seat. Then it goes back. And in this position, it's all the way in the front. Can I push the seat back from here? No, it doesn't seem possible. But the truth is, you can see here, this seat is set all the way to the back, whereas this is pretty much to the front. And this is how it would have to be for somebody of my size to somehow squeeze in. The headrest is 
Okay, there we go. I got the headrest up. So, I mean, at a pinch, if I had to travel for maybe like 15, 20 minutes, this wouldn't be bad at all. I mean, I think children are more suited for this uh, third row, obviously. And I have some cup holders, but yeah, if there was, if the seat had to be in this position, there was no way that I can fit in here. The seats are also fairly thin, so there's not much padding. So it's really a five plus two, and the plus two is for small children, and that's probably the way it should be. Let's take a look under the hood. We have pneumatic struts to hold the um, bonnet open. So the two series um, Active and Grand Tourer come with a host of different engine options. There is a three cylinder 1.5 petrol engine with either 109 horsepower or 140 horsepower. And this is a front wheel drive only. There's also a plug-in hybrid, which I think is a great option, with 224 horsepower, and this is also optionally with the X-Drive four-wheel drive system. There's also a two-liter, four-cylinder per turbo petrol engine with 192 or 231 horsepower. This can be had with the all-wheel drive as well. The top petrol engine, the 231 horsepower, has a eight-speed torque converter auto box because of the higher, amount, higher torque that it produces. The others have a six-speed manual or a seven-speed dual clutch auto box. In terms of diesel, like the one we have here, uh, there is a three-cylinder 1.5, uh, which makes either 95 horsepower or 116, which is front-wheel drive, or like the one you see here, the two-liter four-cylinder turbo diesel, which is actually the twin power turbo, which I'll talk about later on, um, either comes with 150, like the one we have, or also 190. And these are optionally with the four-wheel drive system. The two-liter engine comes with the torque converter, eight-speed auto box, whereas the 1.5 gets the seven-speed dual clutch. And as you can see, they are transversely mounted and they're primarily uh, front-wheel drive and they're offset to this side of the engine bay. Let's start off the drive of the 2 Series Grand Tourer in the city. Because while this is also a family car for the highway, I'm sure that if you have children, you're going to be using this car to take them to school, take them to soccer practice, go to the grocery store. So this car is going to spend a lot of time in the city. So how does it fare? Well, first of all, I think this engine is pretty good. This is the 2 liter um, two, uh, 218D. So it has 150 horsepower. In this case, we have it with the eight-speed torque converter automatic gearbox and the optional all-wheel drive, the X-Drive system, which is, by the way, an asymmetrical all-wheel drive. Now, this engine and pretty much all the engines in the 2 Series are what they call the twin power turbo engines. What that really means is it's a series sequential two-stage turbo. So there's not two turbos in the engine like, a, like in a bi-turbo engine, but there's two uh, a two-stage turbo. So there's a smaller one which helps and there's a bigger one which helps and together they have boost throughout the rev range. And if you guys watch our show, you'll know that last week we did a review of the new Volkswagen Touareg. Um, <clears throat> and I complained about the low end torque and this car really has good torque. I can demonstrate right now. I put my foot down it surges ahead and it's really great for example in the city like right now when you want to get a quick move on from a red light, you can easily use the torque. It's always available, it's ready to go. Apart from that, first impressions in terms of seat, it's a little bit stiff. We'll see how that feels later on once we spend more time in the car and on the highway, but it's a little bit firm for my taste. It's not that plush. Of course, you have different options in the seats, but um, that's something that you might want to check out. Be sure to spend some time sitting in the car on your test drive to see how you feel about the seat. You have a lot of adjustments, of course, for the base, the reclining, um, lumbar support. So here we go. Torque, by the way, look at that. <laughs> Just shot out from the traffic light. We're going around some little bit of uh, twisty corners in the city, mind you. But I mean, I'm a bit upset with BMW for <laughs> using the new front wheel drive platform that they share with Mini for the upcoming One Series, which I think is a shame. I think, you know, there has to be at least one option 
for people who want to buy a small compact hatchback with rear wheel drive. But BMW being BMW, the steering feels really great and it turns in really well and it has such good feedback. We'll speak more about that later on once we get onto some nicer winding roads. But back to what I was saying about the seat, you have a lot of adjustments including side bolstering and things like that, but on the whole it's a little bit firm for my taste. The suspension, since we're on the standard suspension here, is fairly comfortable, it's very soft, soaks in the bumps of these bumpy city streets really well. Seating position is really good, you know, being an MPV, you have a slightly higher seating position as you would have in an SUV as well. Really tall windows, I think that's the big takeaway. Really tall windows, even the windshield is really large, a tall rear window as well, and a big mirror here so you can really see out back really well. Really large mirrors on the side for uh, really good visibility. And you can keep your seat down all the way to the bottom like I have right now. And yeah, it doesn't really feel that, you know, doesn't really suit this car, but if you raise your seat and you have a little bit of a higher seating position, I think it really gives you good command and a good view out forward because, you know, in the end, it's is a tall car. Apart from that, the navigation system screen is really good. It's right next to you at your eye level, so you can see the, uh, the, the, the instructions coming out really easily. Of course, there's the upgraded new infotainment system, as well as these uh, instruments. The heads-up display, of course, always helps. And even though the wheelbase is a little bit large, I've been driving a little bit in some tighter roads before this, I can tell you that it's fairly maneuverable. It is a little bit long, but because it's, a, it's fairly narrow, comparatively, it doesn't feel like a, like, a, like a bull in a china shop, you know? You can really squeeze it into some narrow gaps and park really easily. It has the parking sensors and the camera. So overall, the new 2 Series in the city, pretty good. Let's check how the new 2 Series Grand Tourer behaves on the highway. We're heading out of Munich and into the mountains. So, first of all, let's talk about comfort. The seats that I was complaining about a little bit are not really complaining. Um, I still feel, honestly, it's a little bit firm. But then again, I think on, the, on longer drives, this kind of firm uh, seat really gives you more support for your lower back and in the end might be a good thing. So I guess it's more of a personal taste. But apart from that, the seating position is also really comfortable. Uh, you can also stretch out the under thigh support, which will help you relax on a longer journey. Because of this upright seating position, you also have really good visibility on the road. The suspension is also fairly soft. It does, the ride isn't impeccable, I would say, but you have to keep in mind that this is the two series, this is not a three or a five series, of course, and not the, uh, the X SUVs. So for what it is, it's pretty good. You will notice a little bit of up and down motion. You can also get the optional M Sport suspension package, where then you would, where you would now, you would get the um, sport suspension, but I'm not so sure if that's a good idea overall because then it will make the suspension a lot more stiffer. We will see if we can test that out and show you guys a preview of that later on anyway. But uh, suspension is pretty decent. The noise insulation at slower speeds, you know, up to 80 kilometers per hour is really great. It's very quiet, very hushed. Right now, it's not bad at all, but there is a little bit of wind noise, a little bit of tire noise. Not too bad, but I think it's also perhaps because of that tall front and just the shape overall that this car has. I guess it doesn't cut through the air as sweet, as nicely as, um, you know, as to reduce the sound. In fact, if you get the M Sports package or you get the, um, the Sports Line design package, then you also get a small aerodynamic uh, air dams and channels in the front bumper, which should actually help make the car a little bit more streamlined, and that would certainly help with the um, sound. But apart from that, there's a whole host of assistant features, albeit on this car they're not as sophisticated. So for example, we have lane keeping assist, but it's not really an assist, it's an alert. So if I stray off lane like right now, it won't pull me back, but it will, it will just vibrate the steering wheel to kind of alert me that I'm 
straying off of the lane. But there's also the speed uh, traffic jam assist, which I can enable right now. And then what this does is up to speeds of 60 kilometers per hour, will maintain a safe distance with the car in front and will help, uh, you know, it will slow down if the car in front slows down, activate if the car in front accelerates. So it's, uh, it's a very useful feature, especially out on the highway. So it only works on the highway, by the way. So even though it says traffic jam, it's only for highway traffic jam situations. You also get adaptive cruise control, which is the standard adaptive cruise control. It measures the distance to the car in front. You can set that with a button over here. And then it will maintain that distance and the speed that you've set. If you're coming too close to the car in front, it will slow down automatically and then speed up and catch up to the speed that you had set when that car pulls away. Apart from that, let's see. Um, let's just check really quickly what mileage we are getting. I will go into the menu. Right now it says we're getting 5.4 liters for 100 kilometers. And uh, we haven't been driving for too long, but since we did reset the trip meter um, when we started off, I think 5.4 is a really good number for a diesel engine, for a two liter diesel engine as well. I think it's something that's very good. It should get even lower, perhaps around 4.8, I would say. That is an optimistic number. And I think it's quite achievable. To help with that, you also have the Eco Pro driving mode. So this is the efficient driving setting. There's also the comfort mode and also a sport mode. In the eco mode, the air conditioning also kind of adapts itself. It becomes a little bit less uh, in, you know, reactive to the changes in the temperature that you set. But in doing so, it becomes that much more economical. As well as things like coasting and the uh, gearbox, the eight-speed torque converter auto, shifts up at a lower RPM so that you're always ticking over in a very low RPM on the engine, so that saves fuel there as well. It coasts, so it just kind of makes the whole, um, the driving profile a little bit more economical. Apart from that, in comfort mode, it's kind of more of a balanced setting. So it just makes the steering wheel also a little bit more comfortable. The, the gearbox changes up um, when it needs to and not really, it doesn't, hesitate nor does it shift up too early so it's kind of in between the sport and the eco mode and of course the sport mode is when the steering wheel becomes a lot more heavier and rigid the throttle response is really heightened the gearbox shifts up much later so you're always in the the, the meaty torque band of the engine so i think i'm just going to leave it in eco so that we can kind of see um towards the end of the trip uh, what kind of a mileage i'm able to achieve but apart from that, on the highway, I think this car is also really good. You can take your family with the seven seats that you have on a nice road trip across the country and enjoy the beautiful scenery thanks to these tall windows. And be, sure that you're, uh, be assured that the car is very safe thanks to all these assistance systems. I just wanted to demonstrate the high-speed mannerisms of the new 2 Series Grand Tour. So I'm going to let the big Audi Q7 behind me pass. <laughs> and then we will do a high speed run and let's see how the car behaves. So I'm at 114 foot down. It accelerates pretty well, of course, it's already up and running, so it's, you're not gonna get a sudden surge. But this engine is really powerful. Thanks to that twin scroll turbo, there's torque all through the rev range whenever you want it. You put your foot down and it delivers. So it's really impressive that way. I'm at 160 right now. I don't have to raise my voice. There is a little bit more sound perhaps than an expensive car, but this is not that expensive of a car. It's still a two series. And even though it's a tall body, it still handles its weight and its size so well. You know, 165, 170. In an SUV, it's always a little bit more dangerous to go at high speeds because of that higher ground clearance. It creates lifts. But in this case, it's not really that high and or tall or doesn't have that much of ground clearance. So you feel that stability. It's very confidence inspiring. The steering as well, being a BMW steering is really impeccable. I'm quite impressed with the steering. It's so communicative, so sharp and direct, and also just gives you the confidence to take these corners. I'm already at 180. So I don't want to push it too much. It's a new car, 
that slow down and back off. But this goes to show that even with your family, with a fully laden car, um, high speeds on the motorway are very comfortable and very short-footed with the new 2 Series. Of course, also thanks in part to the X-Drive all-wheel drive system. So in case you do get into a tricky situation, that four-wheel drive system will also help you out really well. Now we're on some really beautiful twisty roads. Unfortunately, the sky has decided to open up and it's raining. So I'm not be gonna be able to really push this car too much, but let's see what it can do. Obviously, I'm gonna put it in sport mode, shift down a gear. The diesel motor is pretty loud now. You can hear it pretty evidently inside, but it gives you really good throttle response and a really nice push out of the corner. The body obviously leans over. I mean, it's a taller car, but you have that confidence thanks to this all-wheel drive system as well. And steering is great. That's definitely a plus point. I mean, BMW steering is known to be direct and I was a bit disappointed when I heard that the new 1 Series is going to be front-wheel drive as well. I mean, the X1, the X2, they're all the similar platform that the, they use for the Mini in the BMW group. And of course, it's never going to replace the true feeling of a front-engine rear-wheel drive car, which is, to me, what BMW really stands for. So in that way, no, this doesn't drive like a regular BMW would and what you would expect if you're a BMW enthusiast. But still, for what it is, which is basically a compact MPV, a family car with front wheel drive, it's fine. It's fun. It's not exciting in a very exuberant manner, but you know, on twisty roads like this, and of course, come on, I mean, the truth is you have to obey speed limits. So even if you have an M5, you still have to drive it down this road at 60 to 80 kilometers per hour anyway. So. You know, you feel like you're utilizing more of the chassis when you have to keep it in the speed limit. It follows a very tight line with the steering. It doesn't really understeer. And that four-wheel drive system really helps push the, push the back end around in case the front starts to lose grip. But if you really want to have your 2 Series um, Grand Tour as a fun car as well, then you also have the optional M Sport packet which gives you also not just the um, cosmetic tweaks in terms of the um, front bumpers and such, but also a M Sport suspension. Now this is a very tight hairpin and I'm taking this at around 45 to 50 kilometers per hour. I know that's not really quick, but it, it's fun. And I'm not, I'm not saying that this is going to replace your three series, but BMW sells this car quite a lot and two-thirds of the buyers of this car are buying at BMW for the first time. And that's obviously very important for BMW or any company to capture a new market, to capture new customers. And that's why I think this car appeals to a lot of people. It's further lower down in the food chain in terms of BMW's product lineup. It's a two series and it's got you know, space for your full family. So it's kind of like a jack of all trades. And because it's got that BMW, it tries to capture that BMW driving dynamics. It really does most of everything. It's not great at any one thing, which is usually what's, you know, a master of none and a jack of all trades kind of a thing. So let's see if we can get our hands on the two series Grand Tour uh, M Sport package. And we'll see if that's any better but already for a decent fun drive on your family vacation through the hills, this car is pretty good at that too.
Well, we have been able to sneak out with the M Sport package on the 220i. So it's a very cold, rainy, and it's quite early in the morning, but we wanted to show you guys another option. So this is the petrol engine. It has 192 horsepower. It's four cylinders, again, turbo, um, two liters. And this also has the seven speed dual clutch transmission and it's only front wheel drive. So with the M Sport package, you also get things like a more sporty, aggressive front bumper as well as a rear bumper. You also get the M Sport steering wheel and you get the sport suspension. So obviously we're on some nice winding roads. I'm going to get it out of Eco Pro mode and put it in sport mode. And again, it's a bit cold and it's a bit rainy and it's a bit early in the morning, so I don't want to push this car, but we'll try to see what we can get. There's also the uh, sports display, which gives you your current power and torque reading, which I guess if you're into that kind of stuff, it's useful. So let's drop it down a couple gears and push the car a little bit. Wow. I think it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, one problem I can already tell you, which I also noticed in the city, which I didn't mention earlier on the camera, the piece that I did to the camera, is these A-pillars because of the MPV style. And I also mentioned that the dashboard is quite deep. The A-pillar is significantly further away from you. So when you're going around a corner like this, it is quite obstructive. It does block your field of view. So that way, if you're going into a corner, you kind of have to lean outwards so that you can see that a little bit better. But the steering, like the, 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 the diesel engine uh, car that I drove earlier, I think is really nice. Especially now with this M Sport, you get the nice progressive steering. It turns in really well. Body control is much better compared to the other one, thanks to the sports suspension that this car has. But yes, yeah, see, I kind of have to, I'm, I'm moving around to see through the corner and you always want to look into the corner. You don't want to look straight ahead when you're driving sporty and with this, a, a pillar it's not the best but the engine sounds pretty nice it accelerates also really nice it sounds pretty good the seven speed dual clutch also shifts very instantly so it's also very responsive that way so it's pretty it's pretty impressive that way I mean there are not too many other cars in this segment of course the Ford S max perhaps is also more sporty and also as an MPV with plenty of space for all your kids and your family but this 2 series Grand Tourer kind of combines being premium having all the space as an, uh, that an MPV would with the seven seats as well as being compact enough and not really that expensive and somehow able to squeeze in sporty handling as well it's not going to be a true rear wheel drive BMW it's not going to give you that feeling, but it's the next best thing. Let's summarize today's episode of the BMW 2 Series Grand Tourer. The active tourer starts at around 28,000 euros here in Germany, and the uh, Grand Tourer, the one we have here, starts at around 29,500 euros. So the truth is there really isn't much of a difference price-wise between the two. And I would recommend to get the Grand Tourer and of course, if you want the seven seats as well, because I think if you're getting into this kind of a market and this kind of a product, why not go all the way and get the longer wheelbase version? But on the, on the other side, because of that longer wheelbase, it is a bit hard to make U-turns or you know, three-point turns in tight spaces. The long uh, wheelbase and short overhangs and the interior design also means that this A-pillar is a bit obstructive. And also, I found the seats that I had in this uh, diesel engine Grand Tourer was a little bit firm. And in the end, after driving for a couple of days, I didn't feel that it was that comfortable. So I would recommend, be sure to check out the seats in as much detail and as much depth as you can before you make a decision on that. But overall, I think this car is a very interesting product, a very niche market for somebody who wants a compact MPV, a family car, wants to have the premium badge and the premium interior that the BMW brand offers, and somehow fits in 
a sporty drive as well. Of course, there's premium family cars, there's premium, um, there's a compact um, MPVs, and there's also pretty fun to drive family cars like the Ford S Max, but there aren't that many which can combine all of them. So before I get completely drenched, I'm gonna wrap up the video. I think this is a good car, but I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know, put it down in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here. I'll see you guys next time.